Hi, I'm Kim from KimberlyKohler.com and today I have a fun chain video for you today. So often when I'm making jewelry, I want some sort of chain and inevitably I have run out of chain or I don't have any chain on hand. So I have taught myself a few chain techniques. There is one in wire wrapping for beginners e-course, but this is a different one. This one's kind of unique, a little bit funky. So last week when I gave you the tips on how to finish your wire wrap loops kind of professionally and to make sure they're all finished off, that was in preparation for this week. We will be making a wire wrap loop chain and we're just gonna make the chain this week and the next couple of weeks we're going to be making two other necklaces that also use the chain but in different ways. I don't think you can see this long necklace on the video. So we're going to make a layered look. You can make any of these necklaces and just wear them on their own or you can mix and match. You could wear two of them or all three together, kind of mix them up. But today we're going to learn the chain and in this case I'm wearing the chain just without any other decoration, any beads, anything. It's just plain right here. And you can totally do that or use this chain technique in any time you would just need a chain in your jewelry pieces. So let's get started. So this project is kind of going to be the basis for the next couple of projects. It makes a really cool chain, as you can see, just by itself. It's got a lot of interest, but I'm going to be showing you how to make three necklaces so you can layer them. So the necklaces are three separate necklaces. You can wear them by themselves, mix and match. Maybe you want to wear two of them or just one of them, all three of them together, however you want to do that they will work great that way and you can use this chain in lots of projects so here I have it by itself and that's what I'm going to show you today next week we'll be using it as part of a necklace and then in two weeks we'll also be using basically a very long chain with a pendant as well so you can use this idea for lots of other projects. So these are the materials and tools you'll need for this project. You're going to need wire. This is all wire. Basically this entire project is just wire. So I'm going to be using 20 gauge wire. This is I'm going to be using para wire, which you'll see me use quite often. It's 20 gauge silver plated silver and I love this wire. It kind of acts like half hard wire. So if you are going to be using another kind of wire that has a hardness on it, half hard is the way to go. If you want to make your chain thicker, you can use a thicker wire, like 18 gauge. It's going to be more difficult to make your wraps and probably take you a little bit of time if you do use a thicker gauge. I would not suggest going smaller than the 20 gauge though. You will also need a clasp to close your necklace and you're going to need a jump ring to attach your clasp and the tools you'll need are wire cutters, round nose pliers, chain nose pliers, and then Another pair of pliers, like bent nose pliers, these ones that are bent, or another kind of flat pliers would be helpful. Um, so you want something that's more like your chain nose pliers or flat nose pliers for that. So we'll be opening and closing this jump ring, and sometimes it's nice to have another pair of pliers to help with the wrapping a little bit. Additionally, you are going to need a ruler for this project. You'll be measuring a lot and a Sharpie. So before you even get started, the very first thing you want to do for this project is to make a mark on your round nose pliers with your Sharpie. You are going to be making a lot of wire wrap loops. We want them all to be uniform. So we're going to make a mark on our pliers and it doesn't so much matter where you make this mark as long as you just use it throughout the entire project. So I already have a mark. It is about halfway on my pliers, but 
it is rubbing off so I'm just going to make it and you can go all the way around or you don't need to you just need to make it go partially around so you can definitely see this mark I'm using an ultra fine point sharpie which makes everything a little more precise because the line is thinner this mark will wear off and I think that's fine because you won't always want for every project this mark to be in the same spot some other project you might want it the mark to be bigger or smaller that sort of thing um, so yes it will wear off even though it's sharpie it just it just does so make this mark and then let it dry completely if you don't then you'll get sharpie all over your fingers so we're gonna let this dry and then continue okay so I like to kind of production line this chain so what I mean by that is I will cut all the little pieces and then do the next step and then do the next step and just sort of do it one step at a time so we're gonna start by cutting a piece of chain three inches long so each link in the chain is one inch long approximately we are humans so <laughs> sometimes they will be a little bit different we're trying to make them all about the same though and so you'll need about one link per inch so if you want a 20 inch chain then you'll need about 20 links so like I was saying I like to kind of do this in production line style so I would just cut all of my links um, at the same time for each link you need three inches so I'm just going to cut three inches and then you could just cut all of the links you're going to need um, as you're cutting these you don't really need to worry about making flush cuts because we're going to do that as we're making our wire wrap loops. Um, if you want to, you can. So a flush cut is the very straight cut instead of a pinch cut. They're the two cuts you can make. The pinch cut makes a very pointy end that can kind of scratch you or stuck in your clothes I suggest that you watch my latest video before this one um, that has the pro tips for finishing wire wrap loops for more information but to make a flush cut you just use the back of your wire cutters toward the work toward what you're leaving behind and it leaves a nice straight cut so we're going to cut as many of these as we want so like if you want to make an 18 inch chain you'll need eight about 18 you may need to do it a little bit of adjusting at the end and I just want to show you I have these trays that I like to use when I'm working to separate things so I just sort of put stuff in the little compartments it is a food tray um, I got these at Target many years ago I'm not sure I haven't seen them there recently but I'm not sure I'm sure that you could get them somewhere um, but any kind of tray works well to keep stuff from rolling around or a plate or a bowl or something like that so and this is the hard plastic kind not the kind you throw away but that kind might work for you too okay so now we are going to start making our links so keep your roller handy and I'm grabbing my round nose pliers where we have made this mark already and we're going to start by measuring an inch so I just sort of flip this over measure an inch and then you want to line up your wire with this mark you made um, I have it on the side, but I have it lined up. Let me just move this so maybe it's a little more clear. And now we're going to make a wire wrap loop. So if you've seen my videos before, you've seen me do this a thousand times, I'm going to show you. So you just wrap the wire around your plier and form a loop. And now we're going to grab our chain nose pliers. We're going to hold that loop in the chain nose pliers actually I'm going to hold it a little bit closer to where it crosses over and we're going to go around with this shorter wire 
the shorter end around this longer end once and as you can see I'm pulling this longer part out straight as I go around once and that's just to straighten out the loop on top of the wire and then you can switch hands and we're going to do two more wraps and you can just use your hands or if your wire is kind of maybe has stiffened a little bit or it's a little bit short you can use bent nose pliers and we're going to go around two additional times. So, I'm just straighten this out a little bit. You don't want to work too much with this wire because we are going to be wire wrapping the other side too and you don't want it to harden up so that you can't use it. So, now we have a little bit of wire still sticking out so you can continue to wrap around or if you have a lot extra we're just going to trim it off and you want to trim it off anyway because we weren't paying attention to if it was a flush cut or not on the end when we first cut all these pieces so we want to make sure it has a flush cut and I also use this tray to put my, my little extra pieces in to capture them so they're not rolling all over the floor and so I made a flush cut on the end, the back of the uh, your wire cutters, and then I'm grabbing my chain nose pliers, and this was in the tips video I showed you last week, and we're just going to kind of make sure that end is not poking out, and I'm just using the chain nose pliers and making this motion. I'm going along with the way the wire was originally going, and we're just sort of pushing it down and around to make sure the end is not sticking out. So I'm just rubbing my finger to make sure everything is secure and that's one side. So we're going to do the exact same thing on the other side. So again, I have my ruler and from the other end we're going to measure an inch. And again, I'm just lining it up with that mark that we made with the Sharpie again. So this loop will be the same. And again, we're just going to do what we just did on this side. So wrap around once to, to form this loop. Grab our chain nose pliers. Hold the loop in the chain nose pliers. We're going to wrap around once and just pull this out straight. So the loop is centered on top of the wire and then I'm just switching hands and I'm going to wrap around two more times. You can use your fingers or you could use bent nose pliers. And I showed you this tip in the tip video but if you get your wraps a little bit far apart you can squeeze them together a little bit. Okay, and now I'm just going to trim off the excess wire and use my chain nose pliers to make sure that end is not poking out and you're going to want to do this every single time for every single link you don't want to miss any so that is one link of our chain so you're basically going to continue this but this is the first link so you complete the whole thing but from here on out you're going to be interlocking them basically you're going to be adding a link to this one so I'm going to show you how to do that so again we're going to measure one inch and we're going to line up with the loop or with the line on your round nose pliers form a loop around a few additional times. I did not switch hands that time so whatever way you feel comfortable you can do that. Trimming off the excess wire, making a flush cut and then let's make sure this end is not sticking out. So 
like I was saying before, I like to production line these. So after I would cut the 20 lengths, if you're making a 20 inch chain, I would go through and make a loop on one side, just the one side, and kind of go through all of them. So the first link has both sides already done. From here on out, we'll be adding links each time. So this is how you do this. So again, returning to my roller, measuring an inch, lining up with the line, and then we'll start by making the loop. So we have this loop. And now we just take our previous link and slide it in to the loop you just made. And then you just continue as if this link isn't even here. So it just kind of drops off to the side and you hold the loop in your chain as pliers pull it out straight and then do two additional wraps using your bent nose pliers if you need to or you could just use your fingers and then we're trimming off the excess wire And then use your chain nose pliers just to make sure that it is tucked in. So there's two. So you just want to keep continuing this whole process. It's the same thing over and over again until your chain is as long as you would like it. You can measure around your neck to see if if it is what you want it to be. For the layered necklaces that we are making for me this is kind of the shortest one so 18 to 20 inches is kind of what I like um, you might want it to be a little shorter if you're a little daintier than I am so just continue until it's the length that you would like okay so I'm just putting the final link on my chain here sliding it on just sort of putting this pin off to the side Make sure that end's not poking out. So we have our final chain and what I like to do is just sort of take my fingers through the whole thing and just see if it drags anywhere. Um, if there's any any of the ends are poking out anything like that. And if there are just go ahead and fix it. You know just come back in with your chain nose pliers or maybe you need to trim it a little closer with your wire cutters. So to finish this, we just need to add our clasp. And if you don't know how to open and close a jump ring, I actually have a video that shows that pretty clearly. I will link below. I already have this jump ring open, so we're just going to add the clasp. I'm just using a lobster clasp. And, oops, sorry. We're going to close the jump ring. And then you could add a couple of jump rings on the other side to hook your chain into, or it can just hook into the last loop. And then you have your wire wrapped loop chain 
so you can use this for all sorts of things. Basically anything you would need chain for, you could use this technique and make your own chain for it. We will be continuing this series next week. I'm going to show you a, another tutorial. We'll be using this same chain technique, but we'll be adding some wire wrapped beads to it. So if you're following along and you're going to make your layered necklace, this is the first layer. Next week will be the second layer. So the next week will be a little bit longer. And then the final week will be a long necklace. So I hope to see you in a week. I hope you're following along. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I think, I think it's a fun, interesting chain and um, I hope you like it too. <laughs> I just want to remind you next week in March I'm going to be holding Rediscover Your Creativity and Make Jewelry e-course. It's a six-week e-course. It's full of creativity prompts jewelry skills lessons and then jewelry projects. There are lots of jewelry projects in this. It's a six week e-course and each week there's a different creativity booster. So it's basically a creative activity that I've created to boost your creativity and you do that then you get some jewelry lessons some like skills lessons and then you kind of put those together and you make jewelry projects which I have several options each week so it's going to start at the beginning of March you can get signed up now the link will be below this video have a great day I'll see you next week